Hello and welcome to the video. This is my opinion and thoughts now I've been able to fly this thing here. This is the Atomar Sea Swordfish. Now I did a video about a week ago where I talked about how I built mine. Mine has walk snail in it and I've set it up with S-Bus. And there have been a couple of weird things around the setup and I think that Atomar Sea are still trying to close in on the perfect iNav setup and tune. But interestingly on the website it also appears that they're now listing Ardu plane installation options as well. And this for me is incredibly exciting. I've been waiting for a while for um, airplane manufacturers like an Atom RC or a Sonic model or ZOHD, one of those kind of guys, to come out with a plug and play, almost ready to fly, iNav and Ardu plane chip. I know a lot of people who watch the videos really want to try it out, but the thought of wiring all this stuff is just overwhelming. So I'm going to go through this. I'm going to kind of talk about the iNav setup first, and then while I show you some footage from the Maiden, I'll talk about how the setup is too. So a few words on the iNav setup. Uh, the iNav setup, as I mentioned last time, isn't great in my humble opinion. I see my first video for all the different things that I found it that I wasn't happy about. I've tweaked it to how I like it, same way as I do in my iNav for Beginners 2020 series. I'll put a link down below so you can see how I set my models up. The flight controller is mounted upside down in the bottle of the model, and they've offset it um, rather than a 180 degrees, they've offset it slightly less to try and provide a little nose up attitude. I've added some nose up using the fixed wing level pitch trim, which is more standard in iNav for the Maiden, and I've set up all my usual tricks. Again, see that video series for how I do it. I've also had to eyeball the throws as Atom RC don't seem to be able to give me a clear answer on what the millimetre movement should be for the controls, aileron, elevator and rudder. And I've also changed the ratio of the elevator and rudder mixing on that V-tail from the original 70-70%, which is crazy, that's just going to overdrive the servo, to 70-30% in favour of the elevator. And that seems to be working quite nicely. I'm not a big rudder kind of guy anyway, so it kind of suits the way that I'm flying. I am aware that some pilots have had issues with the continuously trimmed servo option turned on, doing odd things with your trimming in V-tails. But this V-tail is a slightly odd design as it is quite flat. Although in the flying that I've been doing here, it's been working great. I don't think there's any issues with that V-tail being as flat as it is, particularly with the wing fences that are underneath. Now, I have shared my default files below, so you see how I set it up. Again, these are intermediate files. I want to fly it an awful lot more. I want to get a full tune in do all that stuff and then I'll kind of share that diff file. But this will give you an idea of how I've set it up here. Again, be careful of the modes, be careful of the on-screen display setup, but you can see here what the level trim ended up being and also how I've done the mixing and stuff too. So what about the basics? Uh, central gravity appears to be in the right place, so tick v good. It is molded on the underside of the wing, so that makes it easy to get the central gravity right. Again, you're gonna need a very heavy battery to get that central gravity in the right place. The control surface alignment for the maiden flight, I just gave myself two or three millimeters up elevator on both of the feathers of the V-tail just to help for launch. However, I don't think I actually need that because the auto launch works spectacularly well. As my friend says, it climbed like a lovesick angel. You only need about 12 to 14 millimeters aileron throw for some nice uh, roll response. You do need a little bit more for the elevator. I've got about 15 millimeters uh, travel which is more than I would guess but actually that gives a nice uh, positive response for the elevator and only you know eight ten millimeters in the rudder so you don't need anywhere near as much as that mine's only moving about five because I've changed all the ratios around so 12 for aileron about 17 for your elevator and five or six for your rudder and you'll be tickety boo Again, all of that information about throws should be in the Atom RC manual. So Atom RC, please, please, please do what every other manufacturer of fixed wings do. Put that stuff in the manual. It's where it needs to be. So let's go through the maiden flight footage and let me talk about what this thing is actually like. First and foremost, let's talk about what it's like at slow speed. This gets a very, very good four out of five stars. This is capable of flying at 15 miles an hour 
without stalling. It is very glider-like. Just keeps going, going, and going, and there was no wind on this particular day. It just floats around, and because of that straight leading edge, it just seems to perform really nicely. So, very good slow speed performance. High speed, it's no slouch either. Even though it is kind of a glidery V-tail layout, this can do 86, 87 miles per hour on 4S at full throttle in level flight. So you can cover quite a bit of ground. It also has an awful lot of pull for the two motors. You don't need 100% throttle to launch this thing, 60-70% is more than enough. It has a huge amount of static thrust, so getting it in the air from that hand launch is a piece of cake. So it's only two stars because it's not 100 mile an hour plus screamer, but still a nice turn of speed for something like this. Efficiency, it gets a full five stars for this. I am flying this with a 21700 4S lithium ion pack that has 4,200 milliamp hours in it, and it's burning about 100 milliamp hours per minute, flying at about a quarter to a fifth throttle, cruising around 25 to 30 miles an hour. Now that means that out of that 4200 milliamp hour battery, I'm going to get over 40 minutes of flying. So endurance is very, very good for this, and it does need that heavier battery to get the central gravity in the right place. Noise level, it also scores very, very highly. This is very quiet. You will see those bright LEDs on the wingtips from a very long distance away, even in full sunshine, but you won't hear it till it is almost on top of you. It is super quiet, and that means it's also being pretty efficient as well, and that kind of makes sense with the kind of current pull that I'm seeing. Toughness. I'm giving this a four at the moment uh, with the limited flying that I've been able to get through this. It seems happy with faster than expecting landings. I've only had one issue with it and that is the fact that unfortunately in the coloured LEDs at their end there's little slots to keep them cool with airflow. Uh, when you land in a muddy field then muddy water splashes inside the LEDs and it's a devil to get out. But that is literally the only issue that I've had with this. I would probably give it a higher rating once I've been able to fly it a little bit more. Acrobatics, it gets a respectable three. It is very stable, with basic loops and rolls being possible with the increased throws. It is very glider-like. It will do things like a roll, but you know you have to kind of work the elevator so that the nose doesn't drop. No issues with the VTAL that I can see here. It's flying very well indeed. Room inside gets a whopping four. The only reason it doesn't get a five out of five is that there is no easy nose option for HDFPV straight out the box. Lots of reviewers I've already seen have done similar things to me where we've kind of cut the nose off. The Atom RC Dolphin had interchangeable noses that kind of took care of that. I think that should have been an option here as well. And the last one is for how it breaks down for travel. And again, this is a full five stars. The wings remove without the need for any tools and the carbon rod just slides in and out. It would have been great if there had been those little connectors on the wing roots just so that you didn't have to mess around with those. But in reality, it's not that big a deal. So this is a very, very fun to fly, very well behaved, very forgiving model that's capable of quite a turn of speed, but also you can get to a decent altitude, just cut the engine and just float around as well and search for those thermals. So it has a very, very broad appeal, unless you just want a speed machine. There's only a couple of things to note. Again, as I said in the introduction, the iNav setup isn't as I would want it. I think most reviewers are going to comment on this and provide some kind of settings file that they've done it. Again, mine's down below, but caveat, caveat, caveat. It is not complete, it's not tuned, but it'll give you an idea of how I've done mine here.
Second thing is I would have loved to have some kind of automatic electrical connection for all the connections out in the wing. So as you snap those wing home with those lovely little catches, it would have made all the electrical connections automatically. It does mean though that if the wing does accidentally become a little bit disconnected in flight, it still has that electrical connection. So, you know, I guess you could argue that this is still a great way. But personally, I like it so that when you snap the wings in place, the electrical connections are all made. Third thing is definitely do need some kind of nose mounting option so that it's easier to put stuff in the nose. Uh, the walk snail system is performing very nicely in this plane and I'm having an awful lot of fun with it. But I had to do quite a bit of modding. It took me a morning to get it so that it was going to work okay and there was enough airflow and the camera had an unobstructed view. Last comment is about the V-tail. Lots of people have mentioned that the V-tail seems excessively flat. It does look very flat. It's not at the kind of classic 90 degree angle, but in the flying that I've done here, I can't really see any problems with it at all. So in summary, this is everything I hoped it would be. It is a beautiful flyer. It's super easy to hand launch. It can fly really slowly. It has a decent turn of speed. It's very forgiving. It flies like it's on rails. It looks amazing. It's very quiet. It's very efficient. Not a lot to complain about here. I really hope that Atom RC really embrace this idea of a PMP or ARTF model with iNav or RD Pilot in it. So rather than having to spend a day looking at five or six YouTube videos about how you set iNav up, it's all ready to go out the box and there's a little manual that says set your radio up like this and then this is where you plug your SBUS receiver in or your CRSF receiver, here's the three modes and how they work, that kind of thing would be epic. Just like OMP Hobby did, if you remember back with their ZMO VTOL, they locked down the flight controller so you couldn't get into the Arduino Pilot setup and mess about with it and at the time I was a little bit frustrated by that but it does mean that the manual is more about how the radio and the switches work and the modes work rather than having to spend hours in iNav Configurator. I really hope that Atom RC spend a bit more time and get that all working so that pilots that want to play with iNav can just get hold of this because it is a fantastic model that I am very, very impressed with. So the big question for those of you that have watched the channel could be, has it replaced the Atom RC Dolphin? as my number one favorite flyer. No, but it is very close. This thing is that good. So if you've been thinking about treating yourself to one of these for Christmas, I would definitely pull the trigger. This is one of the nicest planes I've flown this entire year. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.